People are fascinated by the objects created by Carl Fabergé, not just because they are beautiful and crafted with precious metals and jewels, but also because they are associated with the last Tsar of Russia, Nicholas II and his family, who were murdered in 1918 by the Bolsheviks during the Russian Revolution. One of the major uh, reasons why people bought and buy Fabergé is the connection of Fabergé's art and of Fabergé with the imperial family. He was, he was very close to them and they commissioned things for their personal use. Geza von Habsburg curated the exhibition Fabergé Revealed at the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts. He assembled more than 500 objects, including seven of the jeweler's most famous works, the imperial Easter eggs. Only 50 were ever created. 40 or 42 are known to exist. Seven are here all at the same time. Look at Alex Nargis is director of the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts, which has five imperial Easter eggs in its permanent collection. The eggs are miraculous, marvelous works of detail. They are not just works of art in terms of beauty, but they're mechanically precise. Each egg has movable parts and a surprise inside. The most precious are estimated to be worth 25 to 30 million dollars. They were commissioned as Easter gifts beginning in 1885 by Alexander III for his wife. His son Nicholas II continued the tradition. This imperial egg is made of lapis lazuli and gold. Inside is a portrait of the Tsar's son painted on ivory and framed by platinum and diamonds. This gold egg, known as the pelican egg, for the enameled bird that sits on top of it, opens into eight miniature paintings. The imperial Easter eggs represent only a small portion of Fabergé's production. During his career, he employed 500 people, and his workshop produced over 150,000 unique objects. Not all were for the Tsar's family. This crystal egg was made for Emmanuel Nobel, nephew of Alfred Nobel. Fabergé was also a silversmith and created the Russian crown jewels. But very little jewelry or silver remains, says von Habsburg. Of the jewelry, 95% was destroyed by the Bolsheviks. Of the silver, I would say 95% was melted down by the Bolsheviks. They were in dire need of money after the revolution. What they didn't destroy, they sold to collectors. These works started coming out of Russia in the 1920s and in the 1930s, and there was a great great mania for collecting Fabergé starting in the 1930s in this country. And there were a couple of very key collectors. Mrs. Lillian Pratt was one of them. Upon her death in 1947, she bequeathed more than 150 Fabergé pieces to the Virginia Museum. Today, it has the largest collection of Fabergé outside of Russia. As for Fabergé, he fled Russia during the revolution and died in Switzerland two years later. Susan Logue, VOA News, Richmond, Virginia.